the Holy Ghost and fire. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost fire. I need, I need the Holy Ghost. I need it. take us to be consecrated hallelujah consecrate me oh lord hallelujah purge me oh lord hallelujah sanctify me oh lord for i must have a valid i must have an authentic i must have a legitimate move of the holy ghost in my life oh we come for that tonight hallelujah Consecrate me, consecrate me, consecrate me, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, consecrate me, 
Consecrate me Consecrate me Oh, oh Lord Oh, oh, then purge me Purify me
in here. Do you need him? Song simply says, I need you every hour. Lord, I need your power. Oh, breath of God, breathe on me. Come on, just say, God, breathe on me. God, breathe on me. Yes. God, breathe on me. Hallelujah. Mm, I need you every hour Lord, I need your power yeah. Oh, breath of God Now breathe on me Oh, I need you every hour Lord, I need your power, oh, breath of God, now breathe on me, help me say. Do you really need him in here? I can't hear you. Lord, I need your power. Oh, breath of God. Yes, God. Now breathe. Yeah. Come on, all over the tent. Can we just sing it to the Lord? I need you. Yeah. Oh, I need, I need. Yes, God. I want you to wave your hand. Come on, God. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, now breathe. Now breathe on me. We're going to sing it one more time. I need you. Oh, God, I need you.
Hey. Can I get a witness? I need oh, breath of God. Oh, now breathe. If you really need him, wave to the Lord and say, I need you every hour. Oh, might be sick in the building, but we know that God can do it. Oh, oh, breath. oh, oh now breathe on me one more time for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh, 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 breath. Now, now breathe on me. Come on and send up a praise right there. Come on and send up a praise right there. If you really need him. Hallelujah, and let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, and let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, and let the power the Holy Ghost call Let the power Let the power The Holy Everybody fall of fresh on me. Our hands are lifted all over this tent. Spirit of come on. The living, living God. Come on, fall, fall. Oh, me. One more time. 
one more time. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. All over this tent. Come on, fall. Fall. Fresh. All. Come on, make it a petition of your heart. From your heart, Spirit of the living. Come on now and ask him for fresh on me. Come on, tell him you want him to do what? I want you to break me. Hey, shot, ba, ba, ba. Mold me and mold me. Fill me. Fill me. So you can use me. me. Woo! <laughs> I want to be used. Spirit of the living God. Please fall fresh on me. Lift your voices, speaking your prayer language. Break me. <laughs> Mold me in my Masia. Feel me. Come on, right there, everybody. Feel me. Come on, come on. I don't care what happened last year or five years ago. Feel me. Feel me afresh. Open your mouth and ask him that. Feel me afresh. Feel me fresh. Oh, break me. Come on, right there, right there. And to ask him, mold me. Tell him, mold me. Woo. Yes, God. Feel me. Feel me. So you can use me. I want to be used. Spirit of the promise thank you for the promise thank you for the promise father thank you for the promise that we will be baptized with the Holy Spirit fall fresh upon us in our minds in our thinking Fall fresh upon us in our approach to this thing called ministry. Fall fresh. Minstrels, psalmists, dancers, songwriters. Fall fresh upon every preacher, every teacher. Apostles, prophets, evangelists fall fresh upon our youth leaders, our youth pastors, 
upon our children's ministries. Fall fresh. Sound ministry and helps ministry. Fall fresh. Give us fresh ways of thinking. Fresh ways of doing things. Fresh thoughts, even on the text. Fresh eyes to see scripture different. Fall fresh. Sweep through our lives. Let Pentecost hit our homes. Let Pentecost hit our lives. In every facet, every phase of our lives. Hit us hard with the power of the spirit that was given once to the saints. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Come on and clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. And while you're clapping, say fall fresh. Hallelujah. I think you could clap better than that. I really do. I think you could be louder than that. Why is this mic doing that? Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Fall fresh. You don't have to go into a shout, but go into a praise for the fresh. For the fresh. Glory to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor the Lord tonight and we thank him for his goodness, his kindness to us. In this great camp meeting, night number two, day number one. <laughs> Last night was our amazing production, Get My Church to Pentecost. Let me just say this because the Spirit of the Lord dropped this while we were there across the street just now. <clears throat> Dr. Wade, White Earth Wade was speaking this morning and even on last night, I think I might have heard it something that was a little bit off from what the Spirit of the Lord gave me. There's no back. Because this church has never been to Pentecost. The Spirit of the Lord just dropped that on me. I said, no, it's not get my church, get the church back to Pentecost. Because this church, this 21st century church, this, the 20th century church, has never been to Pentecost. We weren't birthed in Pentecost. We, we have no honor for it. We, we have no reverence for Pentecost. And we have recreated little monsters all over the world. We have had no semblance of respect or reverence for the birth of the church, the indigenous origin of the church. We have gone on as if the church was born last year or acted as if we somehow were in the very startup of the church. And we've just painted it our own colors and decorated our, our own ways and we've come up with titles and names and appointments and assignments that were never in the indigenous purpose of the church. This church that we are a part of has never been to Pentecost. It's been 100 years since the last awakening. 100 years. So if you know anything about the historicity of Pentecost, you realize that we are 100 years away from Azusa. There has not been an awakening. There's been little scatterings. There's been little sprinklings, but there has not been an outpouring that hit our nation. There are scatterings of it in the third world. There are sprinklings of it in Latin America, Venezuela, Colombia, Honduras. There are places in South America. And even now we're hearing of some rumblings in South Africa. 
we're calling it the fourth wave. So there's been only three major waves of a global outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So we are on the verge. We're on the cusp. We're, we're right on time. Bishop Waite said, timing is everything in God. We're right on it. Do some study. Go, go to, to Google Scholar, Google.scholar, and begin to pull up information about Pentecost or outpourings. We have had the first wave, the second wave, the third wave, but we are on the cusp of the fourth wave. Lord, let us live to see it. Lord, let me live to see it. Let me help start a fire hot enough that it will begin to burn exponentially and rapidly that I can see it in this world. I want to see it. I've read about it. I've read about Bonnie Bray Street. I, I've read about it. I've read about what happened with Amy Simple McPherson and Maria Woodworth Edder. I've read about it. I was young enough to uh, see Catherine Kuhlman in, in her day, but I haven't seen it globally. My spiritual father started a fire in West Africa. And that fire is yet burning, but it's not global like COVID. I want to see it like COVID. I want to see a pandemic of power, a pandemic of spiritual release and gifts of the Holy Spirit. If COVID can make its way around the world, surely he can pour out his spirit on all flesh. Some of you heard my testimony. He asked me one morning, he said, am I a liar? I said, what? I said, sir, not at all. He said, am I a liar? I said, no. Did I not say? that I would pour out my spirit on all flesh. I said, sir, you said it. He said, look out among the world. There is not one part of the earth that is untouched by COVID. I said, yes, Lord. He said, so shall it be. He said, now you have a template of what it looks like. When not one part of the world is left untouched. He said, look and see. That's why when you gave me that word, mother, I knew what it meant this morning. He said, look and see. Look out and see. And see from New Zealand all the way up. It doesn't matter. Down under to up top. East, west, north, and south. COVID was unstoppable. Do we have more faith in a disease than we do in Pentecost? Do we have more confidence in a pandemic of sickness and death than we do in Pentecost? And because you haven't seen it, doesn't mean it ain't going to happen. And our job is to release the, the sound, the information to get us prepared for this global outpouring of his Holy Spirit. I don't know where it's going to begin. I would love for this camp meeting to initiate it. How many of you will believe me with me for that that we could initiate it in this place clap your hands and believe God with me <clears throat> hallelujah that I could somehow 
infect all of you with the burning that's in my spirit, with the burning that's in my belly, that, that I could somehow infect you with this burning that is in my belly, that you would become fully convinced and persuaded that this next move of Holy Spirit will involve you and your gifts and all of the signs and wonders that we read about shall now be done by you if I could just infect you. Oh, Father, we thank you. Let's lift our hands. Say, Lord, do it now. Do it in our lifetimes. Hallelujah. Do it in my lifetime, God. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put that so deep in your spirit. Put that so down in your heart that you can't rest at night. You can't sleep at night. You can't, you can't listen to anything else now. You, you, you're gaining now uh, insight. You, you, you can't tolerate foolishness anymore. You, you, you don't want to be in a, a place where foolishness, because you're preparing yourself to be used in the next outpouring. Somebody say fourth wave. Say, I'm going to be a part of that. I'm in that. Come on, I'm in that. I'm preparing myself now to be a vessel of honor fit for the master's use. I need somebody. <laughs> I need anybody. <laughs> I need everybody to jump up on your feet and say, I'm going to be in it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh yes, oh yes, whatever it costs, whatever it costs, I'm all in. Whatever it costs, I'm all in. Hey, Shatol Abahaya. Whatever it costs, I'm all in, I'm all in, I'm all in. Whatever I got to give up, whatever I got to let go of, I'm all in. Tell yourself, you're all in, you're all in. Oh, hallelujah. You can be seated in his presence. So we are, hey, whatever. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Okay, okay.
I'm going to Pentecost. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I'm all in.
in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I don't hear nobody. I don't have no help. I'm all in. Whatever it takes, whatever it costs, whatever the price, I'm all in. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. Whatever it takes. Okay, I better leave this alone. Whatever it takes, I'm all in. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. If you don't go, I'm going. Hey, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Whatever it takes. Whoever I leave, I'm still going to Pentecost. I'm all in. 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 I'm all in.
Christ. I'm all in. Hey, 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 hey. I'm all in. Somebody shout, I'm all in. Hey, I'm all in. Yes, I'm all in. Hey, Shabbat, whatever it takes. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hey, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whoever I leave. Whatever it takes. Whoever I leave. Whatever the price. Whatever the cost. I'm all in. Hey, 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 I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. Oh, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whoever I leave. Oh, I'm all in. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Come on, clap your hands. Put yourself in this. Whatever. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, oh, whoever I leave, whoever I got to leave, whatever it takes, hey, I'm all in. Come on, Chris. Whatever it takes, whatever the price. Whatever it costs, whoever I leave, hey, I'm all in. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in. Oh, I'm all in. Hey, I'm all in. Somebody holler, I'm all in. Somebody clap your hands. Say, I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. Hey, hey, Shabbat. I'm all in. Hey, I'm all in. Oh, Shatala Bahaya. Somebody say, I'm all in. I'm all in. Hey, clap your hands for the move of the Holy Ghost. Come on, come on, clap, clap, clap. Open your mouth. Clap, open your mouth. Lift your hands. Whatever the price, whatever the cost, whoever I got to leave, I'm still going. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. If I got to leave my church, I'm going to Pentecost. Hey, God, I'm going to Pentecost. I got to leave some people. I got to leave some doctrine. I got to leave some familiar places. But whatever it costs, whatever it takes, however I got to pay it, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. Just lift those hands up. I said, God, I mean that with all my heart. Whatever the cost. Come on now, it's going to cost you. Whatever the price, whatever it takes. Let me tell you something. Some of you are stuck in a place. 
but whatever it takes. And let me tell you this, you got to do it quickly. You can't ponder. You, you, you got to move quickly. You got to be willing when you hear the spirit move and speak. You have to be willing to move quickly because that step that you take is a step toward Pentecost. You can't now make it personal. Well, about you or about others, you got to understand you made a vow that I'm going to Pentecost. I'm going to Pentecost. And whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Ayah. And you got to move quickly. You, you got to move quickly. Somebody tell somebody you got to move quickly. You, you, don't, you don't have time to call three people and ask them what you think. I, I heard the Lord say this. I heard the Lord say that. But I, 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 I don't know. See, that's that old on Pentecostal you that's trying to hold you from Pentecost I cannot promise you that it will always feel comfortable I can't even promise you that it will always feel right and this gonna mess you up I can't even tell you that it will be a scripture to support it you've been tied to that demon long enough yeah, what the Bible say? What the Bible say? What does the Spirit say to the church? Yeah. And when your Spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. <laughs> and my answer will be yes Lord yes and when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes he that had ears let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church I want you to put your hands on your ears because this is going to be a new place for many of us particularly those of us who have taught the lesson Particularly for those of you that heard the lesson we taught. That if it ain't in the Bible. I just need you to understand this. Until the 16th century there was no Bible. They had to be led by the Spirit. And this is going to be new for many of you because you've never been led by the Spirit. And we have even said it out of our mouths, many of us setting up a context for the gifts to not operate. That if it ain't in the Word. We've said it. And you've said it too. But we were wrong. And we became reliant. And many times when spirit spoke to us because we couldn't validate or verify, we dismissed it and we set it aside. And now the word of knowledge isn't functioning at a high level. And now the word of wisdom is not functioning at a high level because we got to run everything through the Bible. But we were wrong. We were wrong. Can we 
just admit we were wrong. But to those seven churches of Asia Minor, as John sat there on Patmos, this is what was spoken to him that is yet appropriate to us. Put your hands on your ears. He that hath ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That's where we have got to go in our walk with Christ. We have got to go to the place where we completely trust and rely on Holy Spirit because he's not taking us back to nothing. He's taking us to uncharted places. He's taking us into new systems of delivery. There's new spaces to occupy as the people of God. He's not taking us back to anything. He's taking us to what we've never done before. So when your spirit speaks to me, come on. Now lay your hands on your, on your belly. One, one hand here, one hand on your ear. When your spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree. Now that's going to take training. When I learned to play the instrument, I learned by ear. Before I learned by note. I could hear the song and as a four-year-old, five-year-old girl, I could go and pick it out, fully chord it because I knew how to play by ear. I could play in any key because I could hear it. And when I began to learn music and music theory and music composition, guess what happened? It compromised my ear. so addicted to the sheet music I got so addicted to the bass treble and the I, I, I got so messed up to reading notes that I lost my acuity of hearing and I would sit hours and just hear music and play it and perfect it so much so that I became my mother's musician but when I went to music school, they taught me to read. They taught me composition. They taught all of the theory of it. But I lost my ear. And I had to literally go back and work on playing by ear. And many of us, when we first received the baptism with the Holy Spirit, we could hear so clear. But then we began to learn the Bible. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. I know I'm messing with you. I, I, know, I know you're not, not comfortable, but it's all right. The Bible says they met every day around the apostles' doctrine. They broke bread. They prayed. And they fellowshiped. Signs and wonders and miracles. Because they were led. By his spirit. Just slip your hands up one more time. Come on. And when your spirit. Speaks to me. With my whole. Heart I'll. Agree. And my answer. Will be yes. Lord, yes. Before you Google it, <laughs> before you try to look in your concordance, and before you try to do your strongs and your vines and you know all the props, where is the pure spirit of God in what you're preaching and what you're singing? The truth is, we don't trust Holy Spirit. We don't trust him. We think he needs support. We 
We think he needs wit a witness. The, Bi the Bible was God breathed. Women and men wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. There would not be that if Holy Spirit had not breathed it out. But we don't trust the author. We trust the book, but we don't trust the author. But he breathed it out. And if he could breathe it to them, he can breathe it to us. You know what they taught us? They said the cannon is closed. Another lie. Where did they learn? Where, who told them it was closed? Who closed it? These are all the things that we've learned and are embedded in us that have kept us from Pentecost. Who closed the canon? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded present active indicative verb means that he spoke and is still speaking that we must learn to live by every word that is proceeding from the mouth of God but if you don't trust Holy Spirit in your ear if you don't trust him if you have not cultivated a relationship where you know how he speaks to you. I believe that we're coming in an hour where we will be so mature that we will get moment by moment instructions from Holy Spirit. An army of people will be raised up that can hear him so clear and great works shall be done, great wonders. Because we'll be fearless. We won't have props. We won't have crutches. The reason that they tell you to turn around five times and touch somebody is because they ain't hearing nothing. They ran out. Their notes ran out. Your homily ran out. All that stuff you wrote, you done ran out. Now you got to fill in. But when you, his spirit is preaching through you, you got to shut him down. He's like a faucet. If you don't shut it off, it won't shut down. Lift your hands one more time and say, Lord, help me in this next move to trust, rely on Holy Spirit. How many of you believe that right now? Come on, I'm all in, folks. You said it. I'm all in. Tonight we are going to just hear from two people briefly and I want to introduce to you our daughter from Houston, Texas, Dr. Cassandra Scott as she comes to just share what's in her heart. She said something in Houston a few weeks ago and in the last uh, four or five weeks I've been in five states and so uh, I've been hither and thither and I, I think I'm in Detroit right now because I see the cathedral over there. <coughs> but she said something and shared something. You all bring her around please. Hallelujah. She's going to share something with us. And then after that, uh, our first Episcopal bishop is going to come and share some things that's on his heart. Amen. And again, we remind you that we start promptly at 9 a.m. in the morning. We start promptly. So we're asking you to be uh, in your positions by 830, 845. They start in prayer, 9 a.m. Uh, Brother Rodney Bowden is leading us in worship. And we are having a wonderful time. Man, let's give him a hand clap of praise. It's just marvelous gift of God. And so uh, I want us to be on time, amen? That's part of this move because sometimes you linger and miss. 
you miss an instruction or you miss a step. This is a total renovation. How many of you uh, saw, can see, sense that? You know, it's a total renovation right now. Come on. It's a renovation of everything about us and everything that we have done in times past. But it's going to be good. The reveal will be great. Amen. How many of y'all watch HGTV other than me? Okay, that's my favorite station. It stays on in my house 24 hours. Praise the Lord. And I love it when I see them gut a house. I mean, they gut it. And there's some shows on. I mean, they gut it. I love the ones that, you know, where they build it in 90 days. That's fun. But I like to see when they go in and gut it. I mean, gut it. Good bones. I love good bones. I love that show. And, and then we've got a couple of guys here in Detroit that's doing some, some renovations. They've got a show now on HGTV. I, but they won't tell me where that neighborhood is. But they go in and, I mean, the houses are horrible. And they find a room and clean it up and live in that house. And then they totally gut that house. And the great reveal is amazing. I just want to say this by the spirit. I sense that we're in a gut season. The former things won't work as they once did. He's gutting us to the studs. He's rearranging things. We're getting new plumbing. We're getting new electrical. We're, we're, he's adding dormers to us. He's, he's gutting us. He's taking out the old, all that galvanized piping and all that old stuff. He's putting in the new modern stuff. He's giving us a gut job. Because most of what we now carry cannot get us to Pentecost. But I'm in it to win it. And I'm all in. <laughs> Y'all all in? Come on and receive Dr. Cassandra Scott from Houston, Texas. And the next voice after you hear from her will be our first Episcopal assistant, Bishop Herbert Jackson. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet and receive her. Everybody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Everybody say thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, if you mean that, just keep on bubbling. That's a, the river of the Lord is flowing in this place. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. We give honor to our bishop, my mom. And she was with me even on last week. And everyone that is in the house tonight, all of the fivefold, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just feel the Spirit of the Lord. And I agree that we are being gutted out. I agree that the church is being gutted out. Everybody say amen. I believe that this is the season where we're under new management. Come on, somebody. I believe that this is the season that we're under new management. This is the greatest need of the church in this hour to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Everybody say amen. So the spirit of the Lord, I heard someone read that this morning. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set liberty to them that are bruised. In this year, men and women of God, it is an acceptable year of the Lord what is happening in the church right now. Everybody say it's acceptable. In this scripture, I saw two things as Bishop was with us on last uh, week. I saw that uh, Pentecost is the hope for the world. Everybody say Pentecost. Pentecost is the hope for the world. We are under new management. I'm reminded when Jesus was introducing the kingdom of God to the disciples, he was introducing a new management team. And I believe that even as we get ready to leave this place on this Spirit of the Lord is blowing on us as we get ready to leave this place. Greater works will be in us. It's already there. Come on. Everybody say it's already there. Touch your belly and say it's already there. And the spirit of the 
Lord is getting you in preparation for when we leave this place for what you need to do in your cities, what you need to do in your regions, what you need to do, my God, at Walmart. Come on, the church is not as usual. God is doing a new thing. Shall you not know it? I wanted to run all over this tent on tonight because I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, in this scripture, I see, Mom, that Jesus knew. And this is where we are right now. He knew exactly what he was supposed to do. This is the hour where men, women, boys, and girls will not be confused about what they're supposed to do. Jesus knew who he was. He knew exactly what he was supposed to do. And Jesus also knew this. And this got me men and women of God he knew that he was empowered to do it lift your hands in the building on tonight as I feel the spirit of the Holy Ghost moving I am empowered to do what God has called me to be to do what God has called me to do come on in the name of Jesus under this anointing under this new administration whenever you know that you go to a restaurant I'm trying to calm down whenever you go to a restaurant and it was as it was it was as it was you saw the same servers you saw the same food being presented but the other day you went back and on the billboard it said under new management I believe that that is where the church is today we're under new um, uh, management there's a new team that God is sending out to carry this Pentecost across the world if you believe that clap your hands on tonight clap your hands on tonight because it doesn't stop right here with Bishop it doesn't stop right here with Dr. Wade God has put the spirit inside of us to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel in the name of Jesus so that men and women can come out of their hiding place out of all the places I know the church is the only place that wants to not be revealed but this is the season and the hour of the great reveal you knew you were different you knew you didn't fit with the click now God is exposing you to a new group of people that have been there and done that and ready to be all that God has called us to be I feel the anointing I'm so glad I'm in Detroit where the spirit of the Lord is falling and we will take this word we will take this gospel all over the world can I get a witness can I get a witness the spirit of the Lord is empowering you woman of God to be a bold witness you may not preach like them say hallelujah you may not exegete the text like them say thank you Jesus because when God put on the inside of me through the Holy Ghost where he leads me I will follow this is a season in the hour that we are led by the Spirit and Pentecost is the hope for the world I say it again Pentecost is the hope for the world what has been missing is the missing ingredient mom y'all know when you eat something it looks good it spread it out good but when you take a bite you know something is missing that's what's been happening and that's why the Holy Spirit allowed this pandemic to come because something was missing in our church something was missing in our homes something was missing the missing ingredient but now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost you can't hold me back Delva 
hall. I'll preach at the bank. I'll get out of my car and tell a dying world that Pentecost has hit you in your car. They may never come to your church, but by the anointing, by the anointing, by the anointing, you will go forth. Come on, somebody, lift up your hands and say, I'm ready to go forth. Say, I'm ready to go forth. When Jesus came to redeem mankind, he established the kingdom of God. He established the kingdom of God in the hearts of God's people. Mom, I used to wonder, how was it that Anna could stay in the temple all day and all night? It's because it wasn't a building made by hand. It was the spirit of the Lord that was residing in her that she could stay in the temple and pray until the prophecy came to pass. Where is the church? Where are the intercessors? Where are the gatekeepers? Come on, somebody. What have you been doing? I feel an anointing right here. The apostolic church is arising. The apostolic church is arising to do what Jesus called us to do. Adam's sin released the curse which affected everything in this earth. Last week mom said you don't need the Holy Ghost when you get to heaven. You need the Holy Ghost right now. Everybody lift up your hands and say Holy Ghost I need you right now come into my life sanctify me anoint me with the spirit of God hallelujah but I thank God that everything the curse caused everything it caused because of Adam hallelujah Christ came and he redeemed us he redeemed us. Come on, you got to know that you're redeemed. You got to know that you've been blood washed. I always wondered why I was different. Why I never fit in the crowd. I went to a meeting last one night years ago. And guess who the disruptor was? Guess who the speaker was? It was Coletta Vaughn. And as I sat in the back on the back row, I got filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I've been running for Jesus ever since, and I'm not tired yet. Come on, somebody. It's time to heal the sick. It's time to raise the dead. When was the last time you raised somebody dead? I remember my daddy was sick and he had gotten a heart attack. And they called me and said, come, your daddy is sick. I was on the other side of town and I exercised my right. I exercised my abilities. They said, don't worry about coming because he's already dead. Oh my God. I knew that that was my opportunity. I knew that that was my breakthrough. I knew that I needed to go forth and show the world that the God I was preaching about was not just on some sheets of paper, but the Holy Ghost had empowered me to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers. Can I get a witness? And I spoke from the other side of town out of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I said, Daddy, get up and live and not die. But when I got there, they said he'd been dead for 30 minutes. So the devil will try to trick you when you leave here to make you think what you don't have is authentic. But I stood in the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I spoke in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, in the name
name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, Daddy, get up. Edwin Hill, you get up. And just about the time I said it, I was walking back and forth in front of his apartment complex. I saw him rise. I saw him be healed. And the paramedics came out and said, we don't know what happened. But after 30 minutes of being dead, your daddy has a heartbeat. I believe that the Holy Spirit is causing the church heart to beat again. I better have somebody praising me. The heart of the church is beating again. We are not dead. We are just getting started. Take me to Pentecost. Take me to the anointing. Hallelujah! Everybody shout! It's our time to give hope back to the world. If you don't think the world needs you now, something's wrong. They don't want your religion. They don't want your titles. They want an authentic move of God. And since I've been connected to my mom, when I didn't know what to do, I preached her sermons. When I didn't know how to dissect, I ordered so many sermons from the church, they called to see who I was. All she knew is that there was a woman in Houston ordering everything off her shelf. And that's what we need to do now. We need to make sure that we're standing on a solid foundation. I was in a meeting and a, the church just caught on fire. People start praising, running. People were getting, hallelujah, loose from sin. Come on. Holy Ghost will convict you of sin. Can I get a witness? We don't talk about that in the church no more. One time the Holy Ghost said, I'm going to wait right here till you're done. I'm sitting right here because you asked for me. You asked me to be your chaperone. You asked me to be your pilot. You asked me to be your paraclete. Are we broke up now? Are you pushing, pushing me to the side like you do everything else? When you get tired of it, you're not my girl no more. You're going to go and sin. I'm going to sit right here until you're done. I know he don't talk to y'all like that. And guess what? A conviction came over me. And I never went to that sin anymore. Because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I believe what Bishop said. As COVID has hit the earth. So shall the Holy Ghost. Everybody say so shall. The Holy Ghost. You can write it in your journal. Because it's going to happen. The sad story would be. That we would be under this camp. That we would be in this camp meeting. And go back like we came. That we. Would leave here. And let the world die. As they have before us. Mom when you were speaking I thought. How many out of that 600,000 plus died and didn't even hear what we're hearing right now? Why did God spare us? Why am I still here? When I got COVID and 15 members of my church did too at a service. Ended up in the hospital. Pneumonia lungs were collapsing. But God. You think I'm going to come all the way to Detroit. Uh, and act brand new. I, I came to praise him. And not a one of my members. 
Jesus died. Can I get a witness? That's not everybody's story. Holy Ghost, use me. I make no apologies. I make no apologies. And when you get free from people's opinions, you won't make no apologies either. You're the best apostles. You're the best evangelists. You're the best prophets. You're the best teachers of this day because you made a decision not to just be religious, but to be the hope for the world. You should go in your job different Monday. The reason this building is standing because I'm the hope for the world. If the world ever needed hope and if the world ever needed a comforter, they need him now. Everybody lift your hands over the building and tell Father, Pentecost is. I don't hear you. Pentecost is. I still don't hear you. Pentecost is the hope for the world. Give Father a big hand of praise. Open your mouth at the same time. Shout hallelujah. Something has just hit your house. Something has just hit your children. Something called the Holy Ghost is upon you to preach the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands, lift them. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is the hope for the world. I said Holy Spirit is the hope for the world. Can we thank God for this gift? Pastor Cassandra. Hallelujah. 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 Fill my cup, Lord. And I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up, and make me whole. Once there was a woman at the well. She was seeking for the things in life that could satisfy her. But she heard of the Savior when he was saying, Come to the fountain, come drink and come draw from the fountain that never runs dry. Oh, here's my cup, Lord, anybody. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till I want no more I am dead your master fill my cup fill my cup here's my cup I lift it up Please make me whole. I need the whole. I need thee. Any 
anybody like that. Every hour, oh Lord, I need thee. Oh, oh, oh bless me now, Holy Spirit. I come. I come. I come to I come to thee. Come on and lift your hands. Hallelujah. 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 And when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly sound like blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them acts to we praise the lord for holy spirit and i want to talk just for maybe 10 minutes from this thought living life with authentic power living life with authentic power have you ever thought that in life that there was more. That you could have and experience more than what you have. Or that what you are experiencing is not enough. Prophet Shipman said on last night that Holy Spirit would wake us up early in the morning. He said to us that, that we would be restless all this weekend that we would not sleep we would we would he would wake us up and that was because he wanted an audience with us and I told the class this afternoon that at four o'clock this morning Holy Spirit woke me up and he said get up and he said and I said why and he said because what I want you to say is on your iPad. And your iPad is not charged. And I'm thinking to myself, yes it is because I charged it before I left Maryland. So I got up. I went to my iPad. And it had 3%. Bishop Vaughn told us, all of the facilitators last night, you don't know when you're going to be called. So I needed to charge my iPad. So I put my iPad on the charger. And then he said this. He said, turn to Acts 2. And this is the text that he read, that he gave me. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound like a blowing violent wind from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire and this is what grabbed me. That separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit enabled them. And he said, tell them that you can live with authentic power. Because some of us have been living in what is not authentic, but what would be considered fake. Some of us have been faking it so we make it. Some of us have been hiding in the bleachers, if you will. And, and when he talks about everyone in the whole house,
house or the whole house being filled. And Bishop explained, and that blew my mind this morning that she was there. But, it, but she explained to us so eloquently that, that the house was, just, was not just a room. It was a whole house. Glory to God. That's why Holy Spirit is not just going to fill your mouth. He going to fill all of you. Some of us have Holy Spirit in our tongue, but we don't have him in our life. Some of us are mimicking what we see and what we hear. Some of us have, are, are so religious that we and have been in church so long that we know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And what we're doing is no longer real. Some of us at one point, it was authentic. But it has no longer, uh, it is no longer relevant anymore. So the, the Holy Spirit says this. He says, the scripture says that the whole house was filled. The spirit of the Lord came in like a rushing mighty wind, metaphorically speaking, came in like a rushing mighty wind, filled the whole house. Everything in the house was filled. Everything from the top to the bottom, the walls, the sink, the bathroom. Come on, talk here to me. Everything was filled. If there were cats and dogs, they were filled. Everything. He filled the whole house. And then what Holy Spirit showed me was the fire split and began to sit on every one of them that was in the house. Hallelujah. And, 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 and it, it made me to know that if we're going to be the authentic church carrying the authentic Holy Spirit, that we must have our own fire. We, we, we do well in corporate fire. But we mess up when it comes to personal fire. And my assignment tonight, Bishop, is to ask um, this question of the, of the saints. Will you get your fire back? In fact, the charge even, if you will, that, that on this week, starting now, that you would get your own fire. Some of us have not experienced fire in a long time. Come on, lift your two hands and say, I want my fire back. I want my fire back. Your fire is going out. And without the fire, you can't live this authentic lifestyle of Holy Spirit. Without the fire of God, you can't cast out demons. Without the fire of God, you can't heal the sick. Without the fire of God, you can't raise the dead. Send us our own fire. We need fire. Fire, fire, fire. fire. That shows up in our character. Fire that shows up that we're not mean and nasty. Just because you have a title or you are gifted. This is not the season for gifted folk to be mean. Let me talk to this side. This is not the season for gifted folk to be mean. Y'all lost it too. Let me talk to the preachers. This is not the season for gifted folk to be mean. So what you cast out a demon? So what you got a big church? So what you, you know the text? So what you went to school? But you're mean and you're nasty and your character needs to catch on fire. This authentic Holy Spirit that we are able to live with. Hallelujah, this authentic, the authenticity of Holy Spirit is available to us. And I believe that we have been called to this place tonight that we might engage Holy Spirit afresh. A second time. A third time. Some of us, we haven't spoken in tongues since we got filled in 1987. But I'm telling you, this is a week when something new is going to happen. And, and, and I went on, and I, and I went on, and, and the Holy Spirit said this to me. I was reading, and I'm sure you are reading too, this book by this lady entitled, titled 
living with the advantage. Anybody have that book? Anybody? Anybody? You ought to get the book. But in the book, and I'm like um, my sister, Pastor Scott, I've been preaching what Bishop preached for a long time. All she got to do is say it, and I'll, I'll put it together. But, but one of the things that captured me in that message or in the book was a, the chapter on dimensions. And I asked Holy Spirit, I said, what is it that is so significant about the dimensions? And he said to me this, he said, Jack, this is what's significant, is that we are living beneath our privilege because we don't have capacity. We don't have capacity because we, we have only gotten a glimpse we've only stepped in the water a little bit my god let's go to uh, um, uh, Ezekiel 47 Ezekiel 47 verses 1 through 5 and it reads says, it says afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Somebody say ankles. And I, tell you, I said a little bit of this to the prophets this afternoon. That some of us only have enough dimension to the ankles. You know, you got in the water. Holy Spirit is in the water. And we got in the water, and it's just to our ankles. And we think that's enough. At the ankles, we're talking about the width. God is everywhere. Come on here. He's everywhere, everywhere. Bishop talks in the books. He tells a story about traveling to Australia. I used to travel to Japan, um, I don't know, four or five times a year. And when I would go to Japan, I would take a direct flight and it was a 14 hour flight and when I got to Japan glory to God I would leave um, DC at about two o'clock in the afternoon and when I would get to Japan it would be three o'clock in the in the afternoon the next day but what I noticed that he, the same God that was in Washington y'all ain't talking to me is the same God that was in Japan and we have this mindset that our God is little but we serve a great big God um, all over the world people of God the spirit of the Lord is moving all over the world he's moving and we must go beyond ankle deep water it's, a, it, it, it's like um, a person that goes to the beach and they all they do is sit in a chair on the shore and get their feet wet. Look at somebody say, I need more, I need more, I need more. The whole church needs more. I don't care bishops and, 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 and apostles and prophets and um, 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 evangelists and pastors and teachers and, and all the other stuff we call ourselves. We need more. We are putting more credit, credibility in our titles than we are in Holy Spirit. And we want to be big, bad, and wonderful. 
and we're only in ankle deep water. Come on, talk here to me. Come on, come on. We want, we want, we want people to, to put us on a platform. We want people to call us up. We want people to, to escort us in. We want a special place to sit. We want to wear a, a special color shirt and we want a, a, a certain size collar, but all we're in is ankle deep water. Hallelujah. I want the authentic Holy Spirit. I would rather have Holy Spirit than a collar. I would rather have Holy Spirit than a cross. Come on, talk here to me. This is the season that we need the authentic move of God, and we need more of God, and the way we get more of God is by saying to him, I need more. I need more. I wish I could get 28 of you just to lift your hand and say, I need more. The Bible says he went out a little further. And it came to his knees. And wait a minute. We're talking about width at the ankles and length at the knees. And all of them, both of them are legitimate. They're legitimate dimensions. You need length and you, or width and you need length. But length and width are not enough. And we, we are in a place where we don't want the fullness of God. We want, we want God only on our terms. We want enough Holy Spirit, but only on our terms. I, don't, I want it, but I, and I heard us. I, 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 Holy Spirit moved in here when, we, when, and, and when Bishop said that I want more huh? when, or, or, or that I'm all, I'm all in. Come on here. And, and, I, and I saw you run and jump and leap. But are you really all in? Are you all in, in knee-deep water? Are you all in and all you did was get your ankles wet? The Bible says he went, he went further and he measured again a thousand cubits. Hallelujah. And it came up to his loins. Hallelujah. Which represents death. And that's where I wanted to go. Because some of us in the church... As we know it, the church we're getting rid of. Y'all missed that part. The church we're getting rid of. Some of us are too shallow. We have no regard for Bible study. We have no regard for prayer. We have a low view of scripture. Y'all heard that before. You have, we have a low view of scripture. We don't think scripture is important. We, we, we can't pray for longer than five minutes. And if someone goes longer than that, we think there's something wrong. We have leaders that are missing in prayer. Can I help you today? You can't be a prophet and not have a prayer life. You cannot have, be an apostle and not have a prayer life where God knows you and you know God. Come on here. You can't do mighty exploits without having a prayer life. Tongues did not just fall on you for you to speak in tongues every now and then. But we must go into the depth, the depth of God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3 and 16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might, how? Through his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. I want to be strengthened in my inner man. Anybody like that? I'm talking about we're not here to just um, uh, um, to, to mess with your emotions. In fact, I could care less about your emotions. But I'm interested in us being strengthened. And notice I said us, all of us being strengthened in our inner man. Strengthened to the extent that, that, that demons know when I'm coming. Come on. Strengthened to the extent that sick people get healed when I walk in. Strengthened to the extent that I don't have to wait on Dr. Gwendolyn Young to call a healing meeting for a sick person to be healed. Strengthened to the extent that, I, that I'm in a service and if Holy Spirit falls on me to do whatever, that I'm not limited in my abilities. I want to go in the depth. Come on, I'm all in tonight. I'm all in, I'm all in. Um, our capacity is too small. Bishop said in her book is that the church of the living God is not sick. 
and understanding and knowing the dimensions, this part I loved, is not your pastor's responsibility. I'm going to this side again. Let me talk to the choir. I'm, 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 you're being strengthened. Your 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 dimension. Your 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 going forth in the dimensions is not your pastor's responsibility. Not your husband's. Not your wife's. Not the deacon. Not the bishop. Not the apostle. Come on. Not the college of bishops. Come on. Not the paraclete. There's none of that. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to move forward so that you may be filled with capacity. Notice that after he went to the death, and I'm not going through all of it, but once he got to the death, he, they measured again. <laughs> and this is the place we want to go. And when he measured this time, the water was so high that it could not be tread, that you had to swim through it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I heard the Lord say to me this morning, this is the season to swim. This is a season to, to swim. This is a season to be so full of the fullness of God that we come to a place the bishop calls in her book overflow. Do you not know that overflow is available? I'm going to ask this side. Do you not know that overflow is a, Let me ask it this way. Do you not want overflow? I submit to you that there are many in the body of Christ, that there are many in the, in the church that are satisfied just like they are. They don't want no more than that. You know? So don't bring that here. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. I remember growing up 17 years old, and I knew I was a prophet of God. And I remember very vividly going to my pastor at the time, the True Way Baptist Church. True Way Missionary Baptist Church. And I asked, the, and I was already a, an ordained deacon. I was president of the, of the youth department of the Progressive Baptist Convention. Already doing all this stuff. But I knew I needed more. So I said to my pastor one day, as he was driving me home, I said, Pastor Koga, and I was directing choirs and singing and all that stuff, and I said, Pastor Koga, um, I'm singing with people, and they speak in tongues. And he pulled the car over. And he said to me, he says, that's, that's nothing. You shouldn't be bothered with that. So I went, and I was still troubled because I wanted what my friends had. No, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I, I knew I needed more. I was seeing and I was hearing God speak to me, but I didn't know what to do with it. And no one would give me what to do. No one would say what to do. And I remember going to my cousin's church, the New Macedonia Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Robert L. Wall Sr. was the pastor. Rest his soul. God bless his heart. And when I went in the church, this Baptist church was doing stuff they didn't do at my Baptist church. They were speaking in tongues. He was laying hands on the sick. People were getting healed and delivered. So I went back to my pastor at the True Way Baptist Church. And I said to Pastor E.L. Koger, God rest his soul. And I said to him, I said, I was at New Macedonia and they speaking in tongues and they running around the church and Pastor Walls is laying hands on people and they getting healed and delivered and you can barely get in the church. And Pastor Koga said to me, he said, well, Walls has always been a little different. So I told my mother, father, Pastor Koger had said, and my sister Beverly, she just left and went and joined New Macedonia. About a month or two later, my whole family, my mother, my, who was the church clerk and the treasurer, 
My father, who was a trustee, everybody left. My grandmother, who was the president of the Ever Ready Chorus, decided that she would wait a little bit before she left because she was still the chairman of the deaconess board. But at the end of the year, she too joined the New Macedonia Baptist. And it was at that church that I was filled with the Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters were filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It was at that church I met my wife. 40 years ago now. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was at that church we raised our children. And the thing that I'm, and I tell that story to say this, that you ought to be able to discern what's real and what's not. And you ought to be able and you ought to be a one or that, that, that decides that I want more. And if I got to, if Bishop said it already, if I got to leave where I am to get what I need, I'll go. Some of us are stuck in traditional places because of the look. We're stuck where we are because we think that's where we're supposed to be. Because my mom and my daddy helped build the church. But in this season, man and woman of God, you must go where you need to go that you might live in the overflow. I'm calling for the church at large to live in overflow. And the purpose of this camp meeting is that we may live authentically in overflow. You don't have to be broke. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be lazy. If you're any of those things, it's a choice. So we need to be at a place. I was sitting here this morning. And Bishop E.L. Warren, who I absolutely love and adore this man. He has been, as Bishop said this morning, with, with us for many a year now. And we don't do anything without Bishop Warren. Bishop Warren said that Holy Spirit is our source. And he is the resource. Many of us, we don't trust Holy Spirit like that. Some folk that should be here didn't come because they couldn't trust God about their source and resource, and we love them. But this was not for the bishop. This was for us. It was for her only to complete the assignment this morning that um, I left Washington with some things before God. Sunday. Hallelujah. And it's amazing to me that Bishop Vaughn would ask the question in the morning session, in the opening session. She said, what do you want <laughs> from God? <laughs> not, not next week. What do you want God to do today? And I wonder if I pulled the room does anybody remember what they asked? Has anybody seen the manifestation yet? My goodness. And I left Washington. You know, we're building this church and COVID stopped the, the construction and, and, and the like. And, and when we got, and I said, God, and, and you know, the money wasn't necessarily an issue. We had money to do. We just couldn't build because of permits and all the like. And they started working again. On in, in May, I believe it was. And the inside is done, the walls are done, the roof is on, the air conditioning units are in, painting has been done, and so progress is being made. And we have some things before God that we needed that exceeded what we had. Y'all ain't talking to me. And I left Washington. I got on the plane. I said, Lord, I need all of this. See, I, I, I said, Holy Spirit, I, 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 don't, I can't worry about this and go to camp meeting. I, I, I can't come to camp meeting with this, um, with this all mixed in, in, my, in my head, in my spatial. Hallelujah. 
And, and, and I said, I need something. And by the time I got to the hotel, I came by the church first, Pat and I, and then we went on to the hotel. And, and I got to the hotel, and I started working on this paper. I'm still in school, too. And then I, my email popped, and I looked at my email, and I had an email message from this person, and he said, we have put over $100,000 in your account. Y'all didn't hear what I said. He said that we have put over $100,000 in your account. Because I came with an expectation that there was nothing that I was leaving at home that was going to stop me from getting what I needed at camp meeting. I came with an expectation like those men in the, up, in the women and children in the upper room that I'm all in, hallelujah, and that whatever I need from God, I'm going to get everything I need. I came with an expectation that God was going to meet all my needs and all the things that concern me, God was going to handle. And I want you to know that if you have an expectation, God will meet your need. Look at somebody and say, God will meet your need. God will meet your need. All you got to do is be all in. Uh, we said it earlier. We danced and we bucked. But I want to know for real, are you all in? I'm all in. And guess what? Whatever it takes. They may lie on me, but whatever it takes. Um, they may scandalize my name, but whatever it takes. I may not have the things I want, but whatever it takes, I'm all in. Because I'm living life. This authentic Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is here right now. You know, there's one other thing that is in that text in chapter one, because I wanted to end where Bishop started. And she talked about that the promise, you shall receive the promise of Holy Spirit. Then Acts 2 and 39 says, and the promise is for you and your children for all those who are far off. Let me tell you something. You're building something now that will carry. Because see, what the dimensions help us do is build something that will last. And what many folk have won't last. Hallelujah. What many have in this season it looks temporary because I don't want us to leave Detroit and not and lose the power that we got here. I don't want us to leave Detroit. I don't want us to leave Bishop Vaughn's presence, Apostle Vaughn's presence. I don't want us to leave her presence. And when we get home, we forgot what we learned. <laughs> Come on, stand on your feet with me. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Come on, lift your two hands and say, Lord, I want more. Lord, I want more. Holy Spirit, I want more. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Holy Spirit, deal with me. I give you authority one to heal all in my life becomes yours yours until all and day in my life becomes yours is that anybody today Holy Spirit, deal with me. Whitney, come here, baby. Holy Spirit, deal with me. Take what's wrong and make, make it right. Spirit, deal throughout 
night. Holy Spirit, deal with me. With me. How many will do that? I give you authority. Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit deal throughout the night. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Deal with me. Even in this moment. I give you authority until all in my life becomes, becomes yours. I want it to be yours. Come on, lift your hands, Father, even in this moment, Holy Spirit, deal with every hand that's raised. Holy Spirit, deal with every idea. Holy Spirit, deal with every motivation. Holy Spirit, deal with every desire. And Holy Spirit, in each of us, take what's wrong. Make it right tonight. Holy Spirit, help us to be authentic as we live this life to the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Come on and clap your hands. Go ahead. All in my life becomes yours. I want it to be all yours. Until all in my life becomes yours. Come on, everybody, all over the room, just sing, Holy Spirit, deal with me. Sing, I give you all authority, authority. Take what's wrong, yes, Lord, and make it right. Oh, spirit, deal throughout the night, all night long. Oh, Holy Spirit, deal with me. I give you all authority. Yes, I do, oh, Lord. Until, until, Lord, in my life becomes yours. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Say yours until law in my life becomes all yours, all yours. Yes, Lord, until all in my life, everything about my life, I want it to be all yours. Yes, Lord, yours until all. In my life becomes yours. Again, come on, let's honor the Lord for the word tonight. One continual message. One continual outcome. Get my church to Pentecost. Get my people to Pentecost. Get them there. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Get my church to Pentecost. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the assignment. Thank you for those who can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. They have made their way from the north side, the east side, the west side. They've come from various parts of the city. And they've come from all across this country. Others are boarding planes now. Some are just landing because they heard the sound. They heard the invitation. And they desire they desire with everything that's in them to be in a place that you have ordained. 
And so we thank you tonight for the outpouring of your spirit through our worship team. We thank you for the members of our band. We thank you for our vocalists, our psalmists that create the atmosphere. Thank you for the intercessors that have come and prayed. And even the intercessors that are praying that are not here, that are praying 24 hours. Thank you for Overseer Robin Stevens, who is leading a group of 100 intercessors who are praying online every watch. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we're standing in the midst of something that we've never seen before, but that you would call us and invite us. We are so grateful. Now give us sweet rest tonight. Help us to sleep as much as you will allow us to. And when you wake us, whatever time that is, Lord, let us be willing to jump up and get the downloads. You've already told us that we will not sleep normal, that we will not rest as normal, that there will be movement in the night. Spirit of the Lord will begin to deal with us. Help us keep a pad and a pencil nearby keep our phones nearby to have an expectation of a visitation to have an expectation of an impartation to have an expectation that angels will come in our room that the sound of the silence of God even his silence has a sound will wake us up and come in our rooms and rest with us and speak to us give us songs in the night Give us prayers, give us words, give us ideas, give us innovations, give us books, praise God. Give us what it is that we will need to get through this next moment. And we thank you for it. We thank you that you're downloading things in us this week that will manifest in 10 and 15 years up the road. Hallelujah. Give us the capacity to accept all of the downloads that shall come from Holy Spirit. We may not know exactly when it will be executed, but we are here to receive and conceive, to conceive it by your spirit. Overshadow us, overshadow men, overshadow women, and help us to conceive what you are saying to us. And let us not be in haste to birth it out, but to birth it at the right time. Give us the right people around us, Lord. Give us the right people, midwives and voices that will not taint, that will not infect, that will not inflict, that will not cripple, drop our babies and make them crippled. But give us the right people in our ear that will speak the word of spirit only, that we will not hear the negativities, will not hear doubt and unbelief, that our babies will not be poisoned, that everything we leave here with shall live everything that you put in us shall flourish everything that you deposit in us shall have long life we take away all shelf life we want long life we want it to last for those that are afar off help us to lay the foundation straight and strong father i give you praise jesus i thank you and holy spirit how we love you and how we adore you now to our places of abode and rest as we eat. No accidents, no incidents. We thank you for the Lyft drivers, the Uber drivers. We thank you for the car drivers. We thank you for those that shall usher us to our destination without hurt, harm, or danger, without accident or incident, that the blood of Jesus is traction to our tires, that the angels of the Lord go before us and the great host of heaven come behind us and be our rear guard. Give us good conversations. Help us to make good connections while we're here. Like long connections that we will need God in the future for the collaborations that are taking place for this great move that you are sending to the planet earth. And we thank you that we are in God your gaze and we are in your grip. Until we meet again on this campground, oversee even our security through the night.
oversee our tent and our chairs and our organs and our instruments and our sound. We thank you that nothing will be stolen. We will not be agitated or aggravated. We will not be annoyed or distracted. Hallelujah. We give you glory for safe passage. Safe passage in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And the peace of the Lord is with you tonight. God bless you. Listen, Bishop Warren has books out. My granddaughter has candles. Praise God. I have books. If you don't have Living with the Advantage, we are totally out. But they'll be here tomorrow. So, praise the Lord. Take, take 20 and 30 of them home with you and do Bible studies with them. And we'll see you in the morning, bright and early. Be on the campground by 8.30 so that we start at 8.45 with prayer at 9 a.m. God bless you. Have a great night.